Hey everyone, today I want to talk a little bit about walls in Minecraft, and I'm not talking about using them for some sort of fencing in animals or using them as decorative blocks. Today we're going to be talking about their use as a redstone component. And the reason why I bring this up is for a couple reasons. Number one, it's probably the component which I have the greatest love-hate relationship with out of all of the other ones in here. And it's also probably one of the most convoluted for new people to learn, given how just murky its mechanics are, but it's just that murkiness that makes it such a special component. I guess I'll first start with the hate section of my love-hate relationship with the wall. I just think it's so incredibly stupid that given all of these redstone components, I can confidently say that the wall is better than at least two-thirds of them. This block that was mostly decorative, maybe a little utilitarian for keeping stuff in or out, that was definitely not meant to be used as a redstone component, completely outclasses a ton of things ranging from even skulk sensors to even stuff like the comparator. If you look at basically anything I've designed, it becomes pretty evident that I love to put the wall in essentially everything. When it comes to this baby counting display here, I've got walls in the miniature circuitry, as well as it essentially composing a majority of the brain of this giant counting display. It also composes the binary counting system of this rainbow beacon I've yet to make a video on, as well as having some more niche creative applications in what kind of visual effects are produced by the way they connect with each other. Here's a really simple example of an LCD display module. So today we're going to be talking about how exactly walls provide use to us in Redstone and all the various different methods that you can use and apply them in designing literally anything. So to start off, how are walls even used in Redstone? Well the thing is, is if we look at all the block states using this mod I have, you can see that they have a ton. They have an east configuration, a north, a south, an up, a waterlogged, and a west, and most of these configurations have two to three options. Walls are really adaptive. They change a ton based on what they're connected to, what other walls are around them, and by manipulating these sort of things, we can sort of access this new niche form of redstone that a lot of people like to call wallstone. And when it comes to accessing all these different block states, we really only care about three main categories. How walls interact with the sides of things, how they interact with the tops of things, so this sort of trapdoor causes this wall on its top to be slightly lengthened, that's a change we can detect, as well as how walls interact with each other to form this sort of central pillar. And that's what you mainly see this being used for, to create really long, instantaneous vertical wires. We'll also talk about some other really weird niche interactions, as well as questionably relevant things that are kind of in the same vein. So first, side connections. Walls like to connect to essentially any full block face, as well as some notable exceptions, but generally you're going to be dealing with how trap doors interact with the sides of walls when you open and close them. You're probably mostly going to be using side wall stone, essentially only in situations where things are getting really, really compact and you need a way of transferring a signal through somewhere without modifying a lot of components around you. And it becomes especially obvious how versatile walls are because you can definitely maneuver your walls, doors, and trap doors in a bunch of different ways to create really weird signal pathways. The last thing I'll mention is that you can actually also use fences and glass panes for this specific situation, but the difference they have with walls is that they aren't affected by stuff happening above them. So if you only want this functionality, you can use what I guess is called fence stone or glass pane stone. It doesn't really have the same ring to it. It's also possible that I'm probably going insane because of how many times I've said wall stone, and maybe wall stone also sounds weird. Then we sort of have the top contact thingy. And this is basically when walls detect that there's a top solid surface above them, and then they change to sort of lie flush with that top solid surface. You'll basically never use this, it's super niche, and you'll probably end up using these things over here more if you want to transfer signals downwards. But the one other neat application of this is it doesn't have to be a perfectly flat top surface. It can be the top surface of another wall. If we combine the knowledge from the side connections and provide a side connection to this wall above this one, it actually formulates a top surface for this bottom one to stick to in this tiny corner here, which allows for some downwards transmission. 
Except for in this incredibly weird use case where you might use doors and this mechanic to create a pretty fast downward signal transfer, you're never going to use this, but it's good to keep in your back pocket anyways. Okay, now we get to the last section. This is where the fun stuff begins, because this is talking about how walls interact with each other to form these long pillar connections, as so, and for some reason in the game's block states, these are called up. As you can see, it says up true in the middle there. I have no idea why the hell they named that that. I'd rather assume that Mojang has no idea what it's doing when it comes to naming things, considering the fact that they're still trying to gaslight us into thinking that daylight sensors are called daylight detectors. Anyways, for the sake of the video, I think I'm going to roll with calling this central column stuff being pillared or having a pillar because it's, it's like a central pillar. It makes sense. Okay, enough with naming stuff. The reason why this is the most fun part of Wallstone by far is because pillaring mechanics are absolutely insane. The thing is, is walls become pillared whenever they have a side support block that is not accompanied by another one on the other side. So what that means is any configuration where you have a straight line like this, blocks on both sides, is totally fine, or have it on all four sides is totally fine. But the moment you have a wall that is just on its own, has a block on one side, has a block on two sides like this, or has three, it becomes pillared. It's really weird. And things start to pick up the pace even more when you realize another criteria for being pillared is if there's a pillared wall above that wall. And what that means is that this section of wall, even though it's following the rules for not being pillared, it has a block on this side, but it's also accompanied by one on this side, it sees the wall above it and gets pillared anyways. Now this is obviously going to open the door for chain reactions, because if we stack a bunch of them, each of these walls is going to notice the pillaring caused by this trapdoor above, and instantaneously send a signal downwards. Now it's important to note that if you want to draw an observer output from this thing, you need to either do it from the side, like so, or if you do it from this side, you're also going to have to accompany it with a block on the other side to make sure that section doesn't get pillared by its own. And this is already super cool, because it allows for transportation of signals straight downwards incredibly easily. But this gets even more exciting when we introduce logic into the system. When we attach multiple trapdoors to a single wall, we've essentially created an OR gate. This makes a whole lot of sense, because any wall can cause the thing to start pillaring, and that chain reacts all the way down to the bottom, no matter where it is on the slice. But this can also be inverted. As you can see, all of these trapdoors will only allow this wall to be unpillared if all of them are active, supporting the center beam. What this essentially does is creates an AND gate. Unless all of these trap doors are open, it's not going to send any signals through. This is utilized heavily in this rainbow beacon system because we really want to know whenever this machine is in a perfect particular state, and we can know that based on whether or not this entire thing is non-pillared. The only way it becomes non-pillared if it AND gates the output of all of these three blocks being here, which is detected by this observer, telling the machine, hey, all of these blocks are in this position. To take this further, we can sort of combine OR and AND gates to create a very certain condition where all of these trapdoors have to be in, in order to create a pillaring effect that we can actually detect. This is sort of like really old lever combination locks. To go even further, we can use the functionality that already pillared walls can't unpillar, which means that we can send signals to only certain pistons, and I'm not going to get too into it, but this allows us to create really, really simple binary counters. If you want to look at more about this, you can watch the videos relating to the text display systems. A couple more details that don't fit in directly into the main, main categories of stuff. Walls are super useful for piston feed tapes because they inherently have moving blocks, and when the blocks are moving, they don't connect, so you can use them to actually add extenders, like these pistons, which move this thing around. Also, walls have a functionality where they change the position of fence gates. So the only reason I could see you using this is if you have a feed tape which has a wall in it, and you can detect when that wall passes by. There's also what I like to consider monodirectional wall stone, which is essentially the use of the bell here. When the bell is supported directly on one side like this, if you add another supporting face on the other, it causes an update. 
but it won't cause an update if you add supports on the other sides like a wall normally would. So there's monodirectional wallstone for you. Ultimately, the most important thing to walk away from wallstone with is understanding your pillaring mechanics, how these four situations create pillars, and these situations don't, and how most of your super long wall chains will end up being some variation of the 3 by one of walls, with maybe little observers sticking out the front, which have to be accompanied by walls on the other side, in order to keep either the cross or the line shape that causes no pillaring. And if your brain ever gets fried from staring at giant wall clusters like this one, or the interior of this one, you can always go back to using them for decor, or for fencing in animals like a normal person. This video is also far more explanatory rather than project-based, so if you like that kind of stuff, make sure to let me know in the comments. But I'll definitely still be doing a lot more project-based stuff, like the next video, which will probably be about color-changing beacons and how to make them small like this one. I've gone ahead and started running it on 10 times speed now here, and if you're interested in seeing the video on that, make sure to subscribe so you'll be notified when it comes out, and also check out my other content if you want to see other stuff related to that. There's also the Discord server if you want to have a chat with me, or talk about future projects or stuff like that. Make sure to join, link is in the description. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.